Welcome back. Today we're going to tie Kelly Gallup smoke wagon. This is um, typically fished as a trailer uh, behind a uh, articulated streamer or in tandem, you know, two smoke wagons or whatever it may be. Uh, it's a great pattern for some of the smaller creeks and everything. Um, if you're going to be fishing this with a with a floating line, or if you're in a smaller stream where you know a sinking line is not the the best option to fish with, um, you're going to want to throw some lead wraps on this. Maybe 15, eh, probably 20 thousandths is what I would throw on there. Maybe a dozen wraps or so, uh, just to get enough weight to break this through the surface. Or what you can do, let me see if I can find them here. What you can do. This is what I'll typically do. I used to do this a lot in the smaller Pennsylvania streams when I was fishing this pattern. Um, these are just tungsten bead heads right here. Um, you can see in the package, I think they, these are 3 16 um, is what I typically use on that. 3 16 5 30 seconds, uh, somewhere about that will be enough uh, to get you through the surface. And what I'll do, instead of putting it directly on the hook, I'll just carry some tungsten beads with me. And then before I tie my tippet onto the fly, I'll just slide that tungsten bead up there, tie my knot, and then that bead slips right back to this, and then it's enough to get you through the uh, surface film. Um, outside of that, you know, if you don't want to mess around with doing that, like I said, maybe 20 thousandths, 25 thousandths probably would be the heaviest that I would go. Uh, just a couple of lead wraps on here, and that'll get you through if you're using floating lines. Now, out here on the mow, um, it's all sinking lines uh, for streamers, it's all sinking lines. So I don't worry about weighting this pattern when I tie it now for the mow or even the Madison or anything like that. But if you go out into some of, the, some of the trips, some of the smaller streams and everything, it's good to have a floating line and all that. So just carry some tungsten beads with you or throw the weight on. Anyhow, we got through that. We're gonna get into the pattern now. This is a 7008 from MFC. This is a size six, a 4X long hook. And we're just going to get a thread base of gel spun 100 down. Take that right back to the barb of the hook. I'm going to advance a couple of turns forward. What I'm going to do is just go through and pick out three or four plumes of marabou here. So I'm not going back and forth between the two. Um, I'll speak through what I picked here as I, as I go through it. Um, I want something with a little bit more bulk to it. A little bit more bulk. That one's a little better. And I want one even better yet. So. Yeah, that one's junk. That one's junk. Could have done this before the video. I'm going to save you guys some time, but I would have robbed you of the pleasure of watching me sort through Marabou, so I didn't feel that that was right. So here we are. Uh, I'll go with that one. That'll be my front one. That'll be my front one. So I got four plumes right there. Um, that's likely what I'll need to do this. I may need another one depending on how it looks once I get it on the vise, or once I get it on the hook should say but we're going to start with this one just one plume of white marabou going down the back side right on the top here this fly by the way I don't know if I mentioned it at the beginning is what wound up giving us the barely legal Kelly took and articulated this fly and the barely was born, and man, that, that fly has probably caught more fish for folks over the years than just about anything, and it, it's got its name for a reason, man. That's a deadly fly. Deadly fly. So I'm going to take that to my halfway point, or somewhere about that. Just get a couple of good wraps over there, clean that up, and then I'm going to throw in just... two strands which I'll double over of silver holographic flash of boom. I'm going to double this over to make it four and 
we're going to put some internal flash. Well, I dropped one. It's going to be three. It's going to be three. Not a big deal there. I'm going to stop this just short of the length of that marabou tail. And run one on my side, one on the front camera side. Get a couple of strands in there. That's just like I said, just a little bit of internal flash. If you want to, you can skip that step. If you want, um, if you don't want as much flash in there, or if you don't want any flash, that's up to you. Let me get and trim just a couple of these. There we go. That looks pretty good. Now we're gonna go with some chickaboo. Um, we're gonna look through this. This is a little bit more on the. Uh, yellowish olive side than I would typically like but uh, we're gonna use it it's gonna it's gonna have a good good look to it so we're gonna use this here it's a little bit lighter of an olive than like I said I typically use but we're gonna make it work so that piece there is a little bit short I'm gonna keep that one off to the side probably got that tail well, no, that tail's a good length. I just need to find something that has a little bit more length. There's a winner. There's a winner. So I'll just peel that back. Wet that down. And then we'll just run this right over the top. Going about the same length as the white marabou that we have underneath. Slightly longer, if anything. And then we'll just wrap that in place. There you can see we have a nice full tail on that back section. Um, just move that around a little bit. There we go. There's a nice full tail on that back side. And then we're going to go into our body material, which is going to be a cactus chenille. This is a medium pearl. This is a pretty good size for this. If you want to, you can go with the Estaz. Um, if you go with the Estaz, I'd probably go with the Petite, though. Uh, the mediums would probably be a little bit too much on the Estaz. But for this cactus chenille, this is a good size right here, this medium. And we're just going to get this tied in, tying in just the cotton strands. And we're going to take this to our halfway point. Go ahead and get that tied in. And then we're going to take this first wrap. Make sure you have good coverage. Take a look on this back side. Make sure you don't have any gaps or anything. You're not missing anything. Get that first good wrap in there. Pinch your tail. Give that a quick pull just to anchor everything in place. And then a couple more reps till we hit our midway point. So we're gonna call that midway right there. Go ahead over this, one to two. Now depending on how thick your marabou is, speaking of marabou, I got it all over me. Depending on how thick your marabou is and how much you want to fill out this fly, um, you can put more stacks in here. I'm going to wind up doing this because it's a, <clears throat> excuse me, a smaller hook. It's a, like I said, it's a size six 4x long. Because it's a smaller hook, I'm only going to go with two stacks, one right here in the middle and one in the front, counting the, or not counting the tail, I should say. But depending on how thick your marabou is, and if you're lengthening this thing out a little bit, you can go with three to four stacks throughout this. Just, just get a look at it, see how you like it. Um, see if, if, if you feel that it's not filling out enough or you don't have, it looks too sparse for you, add another stack or two in there. But I'm just gonna go with these three stacks on this one. It's gonna look pretty good. We've got some decently thick marabou. So I think we're going to look pretty good on this. If I need to, I'll double one up. But as always on these, when I'm stacking marabou, I always go with my more sparse pieces 
toward the tail and then as I work to the front I get a little bit more bulk and a little bit webbier feather so now what I want to do is just take this feather here and measure it out I want to go back to about the halfway point a little bit past the halfway maybe on my previous stack I'm just gonna turn that around get that set in place and then one two get a third and then I'm just gonna clean these up with a few more wraps I'm gonna advance this thread to the front just building a little bit of bulk there and then I'm gonna trim that just short of the eye I made a mess out of that one made a mess out of that one there we go just gonna clean that up slightly and then just kind of peel those back get them out of your way this is where you're able to see too if you if you think this is gonna be a little bit too sparse I'll peel that down so we can see it in the camera if you think it's gonna be a little bit too sparse by all means uh, add another one or put a stack back behind that however you want to do it but like I said I'm just gonna go with the three stacks on this one and then I'm gonna see if I can get away with using this one that I picked out from before uh, maybe maybe yeah I think that'll work I think that'll work let's see if I like that uh, that's a little on the sparse side. I'm gonna throw a second one on there. I'm probably gonna wind up with two stacks on the front as well on this chickaboo just because the the regular marabou tends to be a little bit webbier, a little bit thicker. Um, a little bit more, there's quite a few more uh, fibers per the section of feather that we're using too, so. I think I made that make sense. It did in my head. If it didn't, sorry. <laughs> made sense in my head. And again, a lot of stuff does. That people think I'm crazy for or something. Who knows? Who knows on that? There you can see, there's the top view. We have our uh, two uh, Chickaboo plumes going right through there. We have a pretty good match with the uh, white marabou that we're using right there. Like I said, pretty good match. Everything looks pretty good, pretty clean. We're going to tie our um, cactus chenille back in. If you want to on this, you, you can, instead of cutting this off at the halfway point, you can just throw it around the vise. It winds up getting in the way, um, especially if you're using a rotary function or whatever. It, it just I don't, I don't know. I don't really see a benefit. It doesn't take me but 10 seconds to tie it back on and I don't have to worry about going around it or fighting it the entire time. So I just cut it and throw it back on. Anyhow, if you want to go ahead and leave that on, by all means, go ahead. One extra step's not going to save you a ton of time. I think it winds up being a little cleaner doing it this way. So, we're just gonna, I didn't like that one there. It's a little bit twisted on me. I'm trying to straighten this out some. Yeah, a little bit of a twist in there that I didn't like. Once again, just go through, make sure that you have good coverage with your body material, whatever you're using. And then two or three to four wraps just go ahead and anchor and then I'm gonna work this just in front of the eye of the hook I'm gonna leave about one wrap of uh, there we go I'm gonna leave about one wrap of body material right here in the front I don't know how well that'll pick up but I have one wrap there. I could have made one more wrap, but I got two more stacks of marabou to tie in. So I want to leave a little bit of room, and then I'm also going to throw some lateral lines on here. I'm just going to clean this up with my thread a little bit, and I'm going to go to my thickest plume of marabou 
on the white here. I want this, like I said, progressing from the back to the front. Try and get out of habit of licking that marabou. Just wet my fingers a little bit, that should work. All right, now we're gonna put this in. Once again, measure it out against the previous stack that you tied in. There we have it, about halfway back, a little bit past halfway. And then I just wanna tie this plume in right in front of my eye. So I'm gonna go one, two, get a third, and then we can pull down tight. Let's see if I can make this one a little bit cleaner on the cut. There we go. Everything looks pretty good there. That's a that's a decently thick piece there. I, I would have liked for that to have been a little bit webbier, but that that white's gonna work pretty good. I'm gonna I'm gonna live with that. I'll be pretty happy with it. So now I'm gonna throw some lateral lines on this fly here. I'm just gonna go with the same olive color that I'm using for the chickaboo. Those are a little twisted. Those are a little twisted. Uh, I think these ones will work. Eh, maybe not. Maybe not. There we go. These two will do. Yeah, they got a curve to them as well. I'm trying to find something without such a drastic curve to it. Also something that's not extremely on the thick side. I like to keep these ones a little bit thinner than what I typically do for like a Barely or a Kitty or October or whatever it may be. Let me get those out of the way there. So I just want to measure these out now. I'm going to extend them back past the tail just slightly maybe a half an inch I'm just going to measure that out I'm going to cut that piece and I'm going to leave just a little bit of those a little bit of the fibers right there and I'm just going to cut against those that's going to give me a little bit more to grip with my thread keep those from pulling out on you if you want you can you can tie it in a little bit longer and then fold it over and double it just to give you give you a little bit more security um, it's up to you however you want to tie that in I'm just gonna leave that one set right like that and before I tighten this one down I'm gonna get my other one in place it's kicking a little bit off to the side on me which I don't really like too much but I'm gonna live with it Same thing, measure that one out. And just trim up some of those hairs again. I'm gonna set this one on the opposite side for a lateral line, make sure that they're the same length. I gotta shorten this one up just a touch. Just a touch. One, two, there we go, we've got a good lateral line going down that way. And then one, two, and I'm really just gonna tighten down on those, give it a good, give it a good pull. That one looks all right, it's twisted a little bit too. But we still get the effect that we're after. This is where I was saying, if you want to, you can double that stem up and just catch it with your thread. It'll give you a little bit of extra security if you want to. It doesn't really matter. I haven't had many of these lateral lines fall out. They're usually pretty sturdy once you get them tied in there. That looks better. Just had to manipulate it a little bit. Not that it's gonna make a big difference. As soon as one fish gets a hold of it, it's gonna wind up bent and twisted and everything, but it looks pretty on the vise to start. That's all that matters. The fish will know it.
The fish will take notice of it. I'm sure of it. All right, get that stuff out of there. I'm in a mood tonight. Yeah. Just about had, with work, just about had enough of it. This is my little relaxation here at the vice. All right. The last thing that we're going to do is tie in our last pieces or our last chickaboo plumes. Once again, going halfway back, if anything, slightly longer. We're going to get one, two, a third, and then tighten that down. Everything looks pretty clean there. And then I want to get one more thicker one on the top. I didn't mention that before I tied that in. I was too busy bitching about work. Um, <laughs> but uh, I want to get one more. When, I, when I'm doubling these up, I put the more sparse one on first. And then I go over top of it with a thicker plume there. It just looks better to me. Um, makes it a little bit more uniform going back as well. So then I'm just going to get that in place, get it where I want it, two, three loose wraps, clean everything up, and then I'm going to pull down tight. And instead of working my thread the whole way back or the whole way to the eye, what I'm going to do before I get to that down eye portion of it, I'm just going to trim that real quick, get that out of my way, and then get a few wraps here to clean up that head. Yeah. Pull down tight on that one and move the thread. There we go. Just get a couple of wraps there, nice and clean, and then we'll go ahead and whip finish. One, two, three, four. There we go. I'll clean the rest of that up here before I take the picture. But there you can see what we're after on the smoke wagon. pre nose back a little bit so you'll get an idea of what it's going to look like in the water. There you can see we have our lateral line running down the center section there. We've got a little bit of internal flash in the back. We've got the chickaboo over the top, the white on the bottom. And then the last thing that I'll do before I finish this up is I'll just take a marker here. This one's going to be a tan. Um, you can go olive, whatever color you'd like. And then I'm just going to touch that up with a little bit. Of, touch that up with the marker, just a touch. And there you have it. There is Kelly Gallup's smoke wagon. Like I said, an excellent trailer pattern. Um, if you're going on a bigger hook, let me get this, I'm gonna manipulate it down around a little bit, I want it to rotate on me. If you're going on a bigger hook, like I was saying earlier in the video, that one spun on me just slightly. Get over there. There we go. If you're going on a bigger hook, you may have to go more than the two stacks on the body. Uh, three, sometimes four, depending on how full you want your body to be. But that is Kelly Gallup's Smoke Wagon. If you guys have questions or comments, leave them with me, and I'll get back to you. I'm still checking the... Yeah, the light looks pretty good there. I keep going back and forth trying different things, and I can't quite get the light right how I want it back there. But I think that was the best we were going to do on that one, unfortunately. I'll keep messing around with it. I'm going to get that right here eventually, and I'm going to be happy with the way that it looks on the camera, but we'll keep messing around with that. Thanks for being patient with me on that. If anybody has any suggestions as far as lighting, I'm obviously not a uh, stage or film guy by trade, so I can use all the help I can get. But as always, enough rambling. Thanks for watching, guys. Really appreciate it, and we'll catch you next Wednesday.